Hi everyone, my name is Simon, I'm the founder of Horrormouse Studio and today I'm sharing with you our very first uh, rendering teardown which hopefully will be the first of a very long and successful series. So, um, let's cut right to the chase and look at our beautiful render we have here. So, um, first thing first, what I think we can say about it is like, there are two things I quite like about it. First, um, the sky, which although it's quite simple, it's still really efficient in terms of uh, mood, because it's not like a really simple blue sky, it's more of a like interesting dusky sky that creates interesting shadows and tints and colors. Although, one thing we have to notice is that the um, shadows are a little bit too sharp, because since it's uh, like the sky, the sun is really low, it means it's going through much more, much more layers of atmosphere, and that means that the lighting is getting diffracted more, which ends up uh, with the shadow being like more feather, feathered. Uh, the other thing I quite like about it is more in the kind of uh, animation we have with the facade or like the actual image because even though we don't have many people uh, except like these two cars we still have like animation on the overall image and that's thanks to the uh, randomizing of uh, curtains we have here so that basically by doing that you uh, slowly create animation and you don't have to rely on like more uh, conspicuous ideas such as like lighting everything up or putting people everywhere. So that's a really subtle idea and it works really well. So um, my job is also to um, like point out what is not working in this render. So uh, I think the main issue we have here is in terms of composition. So to make it clear what I mean by that is that, as you can see when we uh, show the rule of thirds here, basically the the building is taking the, the center of the image and we have like almost the same ratio around it of like void or blank space. So it, it's kind of, it's not, it's not bad, it's just like it, it's not really dynamic or like I think it could be more interesting. And why I think it's more interesting is because we seem to have like a really cool landscape behind that. So what I would do is to sort of crop out like that. I would put like the left third on the building and the lower third on the horizon or like the mountain uh, horizon. So if you do this, you have like this sort of um, wider panoramic view. And why it's interesting is for two reasons. First is that like why it was not working at the very beginning is for a simple reason is that by you have like this sort of converging lines here that basically make you uh, look at this area. The thing is like it's a really small area whereas you're sort of opening to the uh, scenery. So by uh, expanding the width of the image you actually open not to this really small area but you open to this whole area which is much better in terms of uh, communication. And the other thing is that uh, in terms of communication as well, like when you're doing a project you're not just dealing with architecture, you're also dealing with uh, surroundings and landscapes and whatever's, ha whatever's happening around it. So by doing, like if I just create this sort of a blue sky, the skyline uh, at trees and stuff like that, what I'm doing is that instead of just selling one simple building, I'm now selling a building and its surrounding and I'm selling a view so when you're in a hotel you kind of want to know what you're like where you're gonna be so that's what you're actually doing by expanding this view so I think it's like much better in terms of composition and in terms of uh, yeah communication the um, I can make like a really quick digression here because uh, point of views are really really paramount in uh, our field of work so basically even if you have like the best lighting, the best texturing, the best whatsoever, if you do it on the wrong point of view, it's just it, there's just no point. So you have to be ex extremely careful and try a lot of different point of views. And just do like you know really quick uh, clay renders and try out uh, every possible ideas.
basically when I see like this project, what I would suggest is uh, you're selling a building in the mountain, in the trees. So instead of having like a foreground with this sort of like infrastructure, man-made infrastructure, I would sort of maybe shift the, the angle of the, of the view, maybe uh, be like at the bottom of this slope, looking at the building, uh, maybe through trees or something like that, and try to sort of emphasize the idea that this little hotel is lost in the mountain and that you're really in the nature and nothing else. So that would be like a major shift in what you're actually selling, because here it looks more like a, a nice hotel next to a road with a good view. Whereas if you're in the in the forest, it's just like, whoa, it's like a lost hotel with like awesome trees around it and forest and like nice scenery, etc. So I would try that out. Um, in terms of like small details that catch the eye a little bit, I would say there's a little stuff happening here with the grass. You might want to randomize it a little bit, but it's not too problematic. The problem I do have, although, is that th these trees here, although they they're not actually the same, like if you look at it carefully, they're not the same, but they look extremely similar. So I, I would actually just remove them because it, it doesn't add much to the um, to the story. And also there's one little thing happening here where like the footing, like relatively to the uh, height of the pine tree or whatever that is, uh, not pine tree, uh, it's, it's way too small. So it just feels wrong. So yeah, just be careful with that. Um, one thing you can have a look at now is how um, we can increase the um, like the perception of the building. If you want to like catch the eye, the best way to do it is to um, have high contrast on your um, objects. So what you can do is like um, increase the contrast here, maybe a little bit less than that, and. What you have to be careful is not to contrast the whole image because if the contrast is uh, homogeneous throughout the whole image, it means nothing is going to stand out at all. So what you want to do is increase the contrast on the um, building and then decrease the contrast in the uh, in the background so that it sort of differentiates the diff different planes. And uh, that way we have like a really strong um, presence here and this like really ethereal uh, background here. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is also the other thing you can add is this um, burn and dodge tool. So what you can do is to create some sort of randomization in your pattern by using uh, the burn burn tool, sorry, burn tool. And yeah, like if you see, if you put it, set it to, yeah, shadows, you can start to create some sort of randomization in your, and irregularities in your texture, which is quite nice. And here you can see there's a little problem, like uh, how this is on the same plane, it's like structurally not possible, so you might want to just create some sort of joint here, or at least to make it pop a little bit more. Maybe something like that. Well, not that bad. Up. Anyway, um, so yeah, burn and dodge. If you use the dodge tool, you can also use it on the glazing, which is a good way of making it uh, like reflect a little bit more and sort of increase the yeah reflection. So basically, you can see the difference. It's quite subtle, that still makes it much better, and sort of increase the like the presence of the building. Uh, final thing I want to talk about is uh, the saturation. So. If you want to know how to do this filter, you have to check out like one of my many tutorials. Uh, I'll just put them in the description. Um, so basically what it means is that what is red is uh, saturated and what is mm, gray is less saturated or not saturated at all. What you need to know is that basically when you're dealing with um, a daylight system, the 
saturations should be sort of homogeneous, which is not the case here. So that basically what you need is to have like not much of discrepancy between the bright red, uh, like between the saturated part and the less saturated ones, which means you shouldn't have bright red like that. So basically what you would do is uh, sort of desaturate the whole thing, so create like an adjustment layer, and with the mask you just uh, desaturate the parts you want. So that way you can see that is more, uh, seems more uh, true to what it should actually look like. And um, one little tip I'm going to give you guys to actually check this sort of thing is that there's two things to have in mind. When you're dealing with um, shadows and lights, so basically, as I said, saturation is sort of homogeneous. And what you also need to know to check if your images are okay is that um, when you're dealing with the same surface, basically when it's in the light, you're going to have like a color and a saturation. And when it's uh, shifting to shadows, it's going to be the, the U is going to shift a little bit towards blue generally because of the bluish sky you have around which is reflecting you and also the saturation is slightly uh, going up which can sound uh, counterintuitive but still that's what's happening in real life so if you have shadows just make sure they are like more saturated than their uh, normal counterpart so yeah I guess it's pretty much everything I can say about this image I think it's much better with this sort of uh, composition and uh, yeah, hopefully you've learned some tricks uh, about composition and saturations and stuff like that. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next videos. Bye.